Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to review the Xtool F1. It's a super fast, portable, and versatile machine that combines a diode laser with an infrared laser in a small footprint, but with a host of add-on features that can pack quite a punch. So do I like it? Will this desktop laser engraver and cutter that actually fits on my desktop work for all of your laser engraving needs? Well, let's find out. The X-Tool F1 is what is called a Galvo laser. I have reviewed these before with my fiber lasers, but essentially that means that there is no moving gantry but a series of mirrors that directs the lasers where it needs to be on the workpiece. Since there's nothing moving except for a tiny mirror, it allows for lightning fast speeds of up to 4,000 millimeters a second or 240,000 millimeters a minute. Now, will you always be working at those speeds? Of course not. One of the factors in how fast you can engrave or cut is how fast you can actually move the laser, but the other factor, of course, is how powerful the laser is. The F1 actually comes with two different lasers. First is a 10 watt diode laser, which is great for wood, colored acrylics, leather, stone, glass, etc. You will see it referred to as a blue light since it is a 455 nanometer laser that is actually blue. The second laser is a 2 watt 1064 nanometer infrared laser that is great for metals like aluminum, gold, silver, brass, and stainless steel as well as plastic. It also works great on those metal business cards and tumblers. You won't see a beam for this laser as it is invisible, however you will still need to protect your eyes whenever you are using this machine. Now as I was saying, this is a Galvo laser machine, so it's super fast, but that speed does come with a little bit of a trade-off, and that's in the size of the workable area. Since this laser works from a central point, the angle of the laser can only rotate so far before the beam is not strong enough to burn or cut the surface. This means that the full workable area of the standard machine is 115 by 115 millimeters with rounded edges. Again, those edges are rounded to account for how far the laser needs to travel to reach the corners. However, Xtool also offers an attachment to the machine that will extend the workable area up to 400 by 115 millimeters, making it possible to burn widths close to the D1. I'll talk about that attachment in a little bit. As far as how to control the machine, the F1 comes with a few options. First is Xtool Creative Space that will allow you to use the Wi-Fi functionality as well as all the attachments that you can purchase with this machine, such as that extension table, and the RA2 Pro Rotary. And honestly, if you've been into Xtool machines, but you haven't taken a look at Xtool Creative Space in a while, I have been really impressed with the host of features that they are constantly upgrading with that software. It's really come a long way from LaserBox Basic that it used to be a few years ago. Whether you decide to use it or not, you are still gonna wanna install it because that is where you're gonna find many of the settings that you wanna use with the machine as well as any firmware updates. The second method that can be used to not only control the machine, but still do projects on, is the new Xtool Creative Space mobile app for your phones and tablets. From what I have seen, it is essentially the same software on your phone. When testing the app, it worked flawlessly for me and I was able to completely make this project from scratch on my iPhone. This is an amazing advantage to those who would like to take the machine to craft shows and fairs and be able to make custom items on the spot for customers. Finally, the F1 is compatible with Lightburn. Now, for many, Lightburn is the gold standard when using laser engravers, and it truly is an impressive piece of software that I highly recommend on almost all of my machines. As of the time of this review, it does work in Lightburn, but there are a few small workarounds that you have to deal with, and not every attachment works seamlessly with the machine. Lightburn also has multiple versions of the license that you can buy based on the type of machine that you have, including one for a Galvo laser. However, the F1 does not use the Galvo license, but uses the standard G-code license version. It's very important, so I'm gonna note it again. You shouldn't buy the Galvo license from Lightburn to use this machine. 
you need the G code license as of the time of this review, which is also better because it is the cheapest. Now, I won't go much into using Lightburn with the F1 because almost all of the projects that I ran were in Xtool Creative Space, but I will tell you that I did use Lightburn with the machine and I can verify that it does work. So now for the overall build of the F1, before I get into the examples of work that I made with the machine. Extool has been known for the quality of their presentation and construction, and the F1 is no exception. The machine is very well built and packaged and comes with a base unit itself, which is mostly made out of metal. The two lasers are housed in an automatic lifting platform on the machine. The company calls it autofocus, which is not exactly accurate, but it does move by itself. The way you focus your laser is either by entering in the thickness of your material manually into creative space and the laser head will automatically move to the proper height. The other way is to use the knob on the side that will lift and lower the platform. You just want to make sure that the blue and red dot meet in the middle, which will let you know that your laser is in focus. On the front and sides of the machines is a really nice green laser shield that not only protects your eyes, but also encloses the machine to help keep fumes out of your work area. The F1 comes with a hose to attach to the back of the machine so you can vent the fumes outside using the built-in exhaust fan. Xtool also makes a smoke purifier machine that is compatible with the F1, and I have to say I've been nothing but impressed with this add-on. I worked on all the projects with my F1 in my office with the smoke purifier machine attached to it and nothing venting to the outside. When the lid was fully closed on the machine, I did not smell anything when running my jobs. Even when I couldn't have the lid down fully, it still did an amazing job of the fume extraction. This is huge for those in apartments or work areas where you can't be close to a window and don't want to bother those around you or even just to protect yourself. If you end up picking up an F1, I would highly recommend picking up the smoke purifier kit as well. The F1 can also control the purifier kit so that it only runs when the job is running and off when it's not. I have tried some other purifier kits in the past and nothing so far has come even close for me on what this kit can do. On the left side of the machine is an emergency stop button and on the right is that knob that is used to control the laser height. The knob will also be what you have to push in to start a job sent to it by a PC or the mobile app when using Creative Space. Below that is a button that will turn on the framing operation of your current job. The machine has two different modes when it comes to framing your design. The first is just a standard square outline that will give you a bounding box around your design, and the other is an outline mode that will show you the design on what you are engraving or cutting. It's almost essential when working with very small jewelry and other detailed pieces. The outline mode, however, doesn't work in Lightburn at the time of this review. You can frame with a bounding box in Lightburn, but just not that outline mode. One other small gotcha in Lightburn is that you have to tell it which laser you are using, the infrared or the blue diode laser. If you're using the infrared, you will not see a bounding box since again, that beam is invisible. You have to set the blue diode laser and then frame your piece and then change it back to the infrared laser when you're starting your job. Just one of the reasons that for now, I'm sticking with creative space with the F1. On the base of the machine is a plate with threaded holes so you can use the L-shaped positioning bracket to help line up your parts to be square with the laser. This could also be helpful when you're wanting to run a lot of batch jobs, when you need the piece in an exact same place every time. This plate is also removable, so you could burn directly on the surface that the machine is sitting on, or even take the machine handheld. However, this machine isn't exactly light due to, again, the amazing build quality, so at over 10 pounds, I don't think I'll be holding it up against any surface anytime soon. The F1 also comes with a fin plate that is great when cutting with the machine. It allows for airflow to pass under the objects being cut, reducing the char of the final product. Now, with something that cuts like this, there is no air assist, so you will get a little bit of charring, but this fin plate does help mitigate that a little bit. As far as the safety goes for the machine, 
Other than the laser shield and the emergency stop button that I pointed out, there is also a USB key that plugs into the back of the machine to make sure only people authorized to use the machine are able to use it. The kit also comes with a spare in case you ever lose it. There is also tilt detection, a flame alarm, and the ability to set a job to stop if that shield is lifted. You can, however, turn off most of these things in creative space if you choose. Okay, so enough about the specs. Let's get into what I was able to do with the machine. The F1 came with a pretty nice test material pack, so some of these are from that pack. The first thing I ran on this machine was this Chihuahua picture. I burned this at 80% power and 420 microsecond dot duration and 270 DPI. It came out pretty nice, but it was way too deep and dark and took about 14 minutes. I then realized that I had not followed the Xtool material settings that they have on their website. It's actually a pretty good starting point for lots of projects. In fact, almost everything I'm gonna show you was settings taken directly from that list. I re-ran the dog at a power of 80 and dot duration of 400 microseconds and a lower DPI of 250. This time the dog came out very nice and finished in only 3 minutes and 45 seconds. A huge improvement from the 14 minutes of the first one. Now, with this Chihuahua burn, I wanted to cut him out. I cut out this 3mm plywood at 90% power and 4mm per sec, and it cut out just fine. The F1 can cut up to 8mm of wood or 5mm of colored acrylic. Now, I would like to give just one warning right here. Since again the laser source is in the center of the machine, you will never be cutting straight down. What I mean by that is that the beam is always at some sort of an angle, so the cut will also be at an angle. Perhaps this matters to you, or maybe it doesn't, but do keep that in mind, especially with thicker materials, that you will be cutting angled cuts. This might make a difference if you are making a puzzle or other things that might need to interact with each other. With wood nailed down, I moved on to slate coasters. In the material pack was this slate coaster, so I ran my logo on it with the blue laser at 100% power and 500 millimeters per second at 90 lines per centimeter. One minute and 46 seconds later, it was done. I liked how that worked on this coaster so much that I did another one, and this time using the same settings, it again came out very nice and took two minutes and 40 seconds. After that, I grabbed this fake leather patch from the material pack and engraved it at 100% power and 700 millimeters per second at 100 lines per centimeter, and it took about a minute. I really liked how these patches came out, and I think I'll be picking up more of these soon. After the patch, I worked on some stainless steel coins that I had picked up on Amazon and gave them a shot. This time I ran these with the infrared laser, and it was 60% power and 1,000 microseconds at 450 dpi. These turned out pretty good, but could use a little work to dial them in just right. I then worked on a brass coin and was very happy with the results that I got with that. I actually released an entire other video on exactly how I was able to make this brass coin, which I will link above if you're interested in how I did that. It's just on the surface, but with the F1 and some layering tricks, you really get the feeling that this coin is 3D. After that, I wanted to run some tests on stainless steel to see what colors I was able to get. I ran a power speed test in Lightbird off of some files released by Kobe Schmidt on the F1 Facebook group, and I was able to get some pretty nice colors using the infrared laser. I then took that data and ran a little Mario test in color, which also worked out really well. I then ran some plastic using the black acrylic material settings from the website, it came out very nice as expected. I then risked my AirPods case and did the same thing with the same acrylic settings from the website. And again, it came out very nice and professional looking. Xtool also sent me some of these necklaces to try out. And again, the infrared laser made quick work of them, following the material settings from the website. After that, I wanted to run the Norton white tile method on some pre-prepared white tiles. There are plenty of videos online if you want to know more about the Norton white tile method. Also to dial in my settings, I ran some power speed tests made with the Xtool material test array button under arrays in Xtool creative space. 
It really is a great little tool that I won't go into much here, but it allowed me to not only make some plain square color material tests, but also images to dial in my settings. I then ran my normal test tile image at 1400 millisecond dot duration and 50% power at 250 dpi using the Jarvis dithering method and it turned out very nice using that diode laser. I also made this cat with an aluminum business card with the infrared laser at 60% power and 150 microsecond dot duration. This has to be the most detailed image I have ever attempted with any of my laser engravers. And you can see it turned out really nice. I did a few business card ideas using the same cards and these also came out nice and were made much faster and could easily be set up for some sort of batch job with the machine. Now onto some tumblers. I already had an RA2 Pro that I was using with my D1 and I can also use it with the F1 machine. However, if you already have an RA2 Pro, the core that you need to use is different, so you will need to get the proper cord from Xtool. It's not the same cord that attaches to the D1 Pros or the P2 laser. It's different than both. Now, while there are some registration lines on the base to help you line up the rotary square to the laser, I really would love to see Xtool come up with a way to attach the RA2 Pro to the base to make sure it's squared to that laser. I also wish that the height adjuster would also attach to the end of the RA2 Pro so that you know if you have it perfectly center as it's so important to have everything aligned properly when engraving a glass or a tumbler. Even just having it slightly off could kind of ruin your cup. With the workspace extender that I will talk about in a minute, they do have a way to attach that to the base to make sure it's square so I really hope they come up with a plan for the rotary as well. Anyway, with everything set up, I was able to engrave this tumbler with the infrared laser at 90% power and 550 millimeters a second at 200 lines per centimeter. With the IR laser, there is also much less cleanup afterwards. It just comes out clean. Another thing I did after that was to raise the whole machine up with some tape rolls and remove the base plate so I could engrave a logo on the bottom side. With the flexibility of this machine, the task was a breeze. Now if you don't have a rotary, you can still engrave on tumblers by just laying it flat in the machine. You might be limited to how wide a design you can engrave since you are working with a sloped surface, but I was able to engrave this goblet tumbler in about a minute using the F1. I only made the design about 40 centimeters or an inch and a half wide, so I'm not sure how far I could have pushed it, but I may look more into that in the future. As you can see, it did a great job with no fading on the sides. The last thing to test with the machine was the extension table that you could also purchase separately with the F1. To be honest, at first, I thought it was a little bit of a gimmick, since I feel like if you really wanted to engrave or cut larger objects, then get a larger machine, but I have to say that I really ended up liking it. First, like I had mentioned before, this table screws into the base so I know that it is square to the machine. Its top surface has fins on it so you can have good airflow at the bottom when cutting. It also has a nice slide ruler for keeping pieces square as well as multiple tie down options to keep your pieces secure. One other cool feature while using the extender is that in creative space, you can set your project to frame and then use the knob on the F1 to move the table back and forth while the laser shows the extent of where your job is going to be. It's a pretty cool feature that ensures you know where your job is going to be engraved on or burned on exactly. The first thing I burned was a picture of New York on some black photo paper that came with the extension kit. It turned out very nice and I could see many types of uses for this type of extension. The next thing that I wanted to try was Xtool Creative Space mobile app. Still using the extension, I downloaded the app and fully created a job where I cut out the name Claire. I first cut out the letters out of some three millimeter plywood. As you can see, the wood I used was longer than the workable area of the F1, but the extension table was still able to hold it just fine. I then used the outline function in the mobile app to make a backing piece to hold the name. 
I made this out of some cardboard and then painted and mounted the wood onto it. It turned out really great and I really think it could open up the possibilities to someone wanting to have just a little bit more space on the F1. So for my final thoughts on the Xtool F1, I think if you have a small business where you want to engrave on small things like coasters, tiles, flasks, tumblers, jewelry, and other small objects, then the F1 is a great choice for you. To be honest, a majority of the things that I engraved still fit within that 115 by 115 millimeter workable area. But if that's not big enough for you, then the D1 Pro is still a nice choice. If you are limited on space and you travel to shows and want to include customization on things right on the spot, then this is an amazing tool for that. The fact that it can be fully enclosed is also a huge plus for small spaces and traveling as well. If I had just one complaint about the machine, it would be the fact that the F1 does not come with standard safety glasses. While you do have the laser shield that should help to protect your eyes, that won't completely protect you if you're using the rotary or the workspace extension kit. You only have one set of eyes, so you really want to protect them, so if they don't start including them with the kits, I would highly recommend picking up a set or two of your own. Also, do keep in mind that the blue laser and the infrared laser are different wavelengths, so find some glasses that will protect you from both. So that's it. If you like this review, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, and all things maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.